Hi guys, Mr. Roper here. And uh, I'm gonna introduce you today to one of my favorite things about Adobe Photoshop, and that's the brush tools. In Photoshop, you can create brushes that look and act and feel just like the real thing. So you can pretend like you're painting with watercolor, ink, acrylic, pencil, charcoal, you name it. Um, it's one of the most powerful features of Photoshop and something that I've really been diving into a lot lately with my own personal work. Um, here you can see some of my most recent drawings. I'm doing Inktober this month, and I'm doing a different comic book character every day of the month. And uh, I set a challenge for myself that every single drawing that I did was going to be done using the brushes from Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Fresco, which is the drawing app for iPad. So you can see the huge variety of styles that you can get just using these custom brushes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the basic brushes, how you can install even more brushes, and then how you can customize them and make your own brushes from photos that you've taken uh, on your own. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna create a new document here, and it really doesn't matter what uh, size I do. I'm just gonna make one for print, and I'll just stick with my standard letter size paper, eight and a half by 11 at 300 pixels per inch. Now with this blank canvas, uh, I can test out some of the basic brush tools in Photoshop. And I wanna show you how you can access those. So here I've got my toolbar over here on this side, I've got my um, layers and my options. And I'm gonna be using a couple different options from the brush tool, but let's start with the basics. First thing I'm gonna do is go here to the brush tool that's on my toolbar and it's marked with the letter B. So if you ever need to grab the brush, you just press B on your keyboard and that'll bring it up, okay? You can see that there is some other brushes in there, the pencil tool and so on, but we're just gonna stick with the basic brush. Now, as soon as you select the brush, all of your brush options appear here along the top of the screen. And they go from basic over here on the left and they get more complex as we go to the right. So let's open this up and let's see what we've got. First thing, um, if you click on this, you're gonna see uh, this little icon right here is where it keeps all of your brushes. And so um, in the general brushes, which are the standard brushes that come with Photoshop, you'll see things like the hard brush and the soft brush and so on. Um, the hard brush, as you can see, is a round brush with 100% hardness and you can change its size using this slider at the top. So let me pick like a little smaller size. And when I draw with this, I'm gonna get a hard edge brush that's pretty much like a Sharpie marker. It has a very hard edge to it. Uh, when you make a mark in Photoshop, if you wanna go backwards, just press Control Z and that'll undo the last thing that you did, okay? The other basic brush is the soft brush, which has a hardness of zero. And that brush appears more like a spray can. As you draw with it, you're gonna see the edges are soft and fuzzy like a spray can. Um, so it gives you a softer edge to what you're doing. So those are our basic brushes and how you can customize them. You can change their size and their hardness, and you can also change the shape of the brush with this little icon here. For example, this is a perfectly round brush, but if I squeeze it and I tilt it, it becomes a chisel tip kind of like a highlighter marker. And so now it'll go from thick to thin. Or if I turn the hardness up, you can get that kind of chisel edge like a thick Sharpie marker would have, right? All right. Now let's jump over into some of the other things you can change about this brush. Um, there are some settings along the top here for opacity, flow, and smoothing. and just a, in a quick demonstration of this, opacity is gonna change how transparent the brush is. So if I turn its opacity down, you see now it looks more like gray than black. But if I draw over this, you can see that the brush is actually transparent. And the more that I mark, the darker it gets, okay? Let me escape back out of there. I'm gonna turn its opacity back up and let's try smoothing. Smoothing controls how wiggly the brush is. So sometimes it can be hard when you're drawing with a mouse to keep the brush kind of um, smooth and not wiggly with your hand movements. But if I turn the smoothing up, 
it will give me a very smooth curved line. And you'll feel it's a little bit slower when you have this set up. It takes more memory, but it will give you a nice smooth result with, with your brush stroke. Okay, so you've seen some of the basic brushes, but there are also hundreds of other brushes that are included with Photoshop. When you open this up, we were only in the general brushes folder but there's also dry media brushes that look like um, dry things like pencils, charcoals, pastels, and each of these has a slightly different look to it. Here's the pencil brush, for example. If I turn this up, and you can make your brushes bigger or smaller using the two bracket keys on your keyboard next to the letter P. So I'm gonna make this brush a little bit bigger so you can see it's kind of a oddly shaped. It's not circle circular. It has more of a rough edge to it. And when I draw, it's gonna give me that rough edge like a charcoal pencil, okay? Now in this case, I would probably turn its smoothing up and its flow up a little bit. And then when I draw with it, I'll get a smoother result. I often use this pencil brush when I'm doing my own drawings and I'll turn its smoothing and flow up pretty, hard, uh, pretty high so that when I draw with it, I get a nice smooth pencil line to the edge. And you can play around with each of these and test them out. There's charcoal, there's chunky charcoal, which has a really rough kind of beat up edge to it. And it's nice for creating textures. So you can just click. And every time you click, you see that the brush is rotating and changing to give you a more random look. This is actually a really cool brush to use for making trees, right? I could do something like that. I could make it smaller and give it a tree trunk like this. And then I could kind of make it even smaller, oops, make it even smaller and give it some branches kind of coming out like here. You can create some kind of generic tree designs that way, okay? So let's take the whole thing here and I'm just gonna clear it out. Go back to my blank white screen. So some great brushes in the dry media. There's also wet media brushes. And this are, these are ones that um, replicate watercolor and wet paints like oil paints and acrylics. So in this example, if I take this thick and thin brush and I make it larger, um, I've got the flow turned all the way up. I'm gonna actually pick a, a different color for this. And as I paint with it, it's gonna give you kind of a wet edge to the brush, okay? Um, and I can layer this up it works a little bit like a hard edge brush in this case. If I change its mode from normal to multiply, as I paint, each time I paint, it's gonna get darker and you can layer up color this way, okay? So let's go back a few steps, take that back to the white brush. Um, the other one that will be in there are like the oil paint brushes. And you can see they have kind of a smeary look to them. As you paint, the edges kind of fade in and out like an oil brush. And if you go back over them, you can actually continue to smear those colors around the edges. And so you can get really nice natural looking brushes that way. Okay, let's take that all the way back. So cool. Those are the basic brush categories. Um, there is one more folder called special effects. And this is where you can get things like paint splatters and halftone patterns. So for example, with the splatter brush, if I turn this up really big, I can create awesome abstract paint splatters to create texture on my pages. Um, there are some blending brushes in here that as you paint, they blend the colors into the background. And there are also, oops, let me get back over my brush here. There are also uh, half tone or screen tone brushes that will fill in areas with a half tone pattern. This is basically a very small dot pattern that you can use to create shading, like in a comic book or a newspaper. So I use these a lot in my personal drawing style. They give you that kind of uh, comic book or Japanese manga look to your drawings. So that brings us to the end of the basic brushes that are included in Photoshop. Try them out, pick some different colors, mix them around, see what you can draw and create. And then in my next video, I'm going to show you how you can add even more brushes to your set to go farther with it. 
Hi guys, Mr. Roper here for part two of my series on brushes. Now in Photoshop, we, uh, in the first video, we looked at how you can just use the basic brushes in Photoshop and they're pretty powerful. You can draw a lot using just those brushes, but there are thousands of brushes out there that you can add to your library and use across all your different Adobe programs. Um, so I'm gonna show you today how we can add those brushes. So I'm back on my plain blank canvas here. I've got my brush tool enabled. And when I click up on the options for brushes at the top of my screen, you can see that I actually have way more brushes in here than you guys uh, will probably see when you're first starting out. You probably have general and dry media, wet media and special effects. But all of these other brushes come from Adobe's website and there's literally hundreds of them for anything that you could want to draw. There's brushes that look like clouds, brushes that look like grass and tree bark and rock. So I use these all the time in my work and I wanna show you how you can access them on your own computer. From this brush menu at the top corner, you'll see this little gear icon. And if we open that up, you'll see an option to get more brushes. When I click this, it's gonna open up a new tab in Chrome and it's gonna take me to the adobe.com website where I can download the brushes from Kyle T. Webster. He's the designer I mentioned in my last video whose full-time job is to create custom art brushes for Photoshop. What an awesome job. So down below, you can see all of his packages that he's released of his different brushes. And he does seasonal packages, like right now where we have the summer 2020. Um, he has his mega pack, which has over 300 uh, of his most popular brushes including inks, watercolors, pastels. He just did a set of um, brushes inspired by the work of Keith Haring, which are awesome. They have paint drips and graffiti style brushes. Watercolor, dry media, gouache, spatter paints, inkers. If you like manga or comic books, this set right here is awesome. There's cross hatchers for creating texture. Um, and there's even sets that look like copy machine print. So take a look, each of these downloads as its own package and you can um, install them on your system. So what I'm gonna do is let's get the new, uh, I'm gonna get the 2020 release cause I don't have that on my computer here. So I'll do download. You're gonna see it drops down into your downloads folder and it comes as an ABR file. This is an Adobe brush resource file. And so if I right click it and I click open, I'm sorry, don't right click, just click the little arrow next to it and click open. It will install that brush package in Photoshop for you, okay? I already had Photoshop open, so it jumps right into my program. And from here, if I go down to my brush list, there it is, summer 2020. So I can open this up and let's take a look at some of the brushes that were included in this set. There's this awesome impressionist brush. Let me grab a different color and it's gonna give you these like really smooth, staggered brush strokes that you can use to paint landscapes, right? So let's go back a couple steps. Let's see what I can do with these. I'm gonna make my brush bigger and I'm just gonna put in some nice rolling green hills here on my design. Okay. Now you can see that this brush runs a little bit slower because it's taking quite a bit of memory to run such a complicated brush design, okay? But I can quickly put in some grassy hills with this. Then let's see what else we've got. Um, Bix brush, slash brush, we've got some waves, um, some charcoal brushes here. I'm gonna actually take that. Let me take the charcoal brush and I'm gonna switch to a darker green here and see if I can make a little tree. I'm in my Bob Ross mode right now. Let's see if we can bush this. Oh, a happy little tree, happy little tree up here in the corner, cool. All right, now if I've got a tree, let's add some tree trunks to it. And there's this cool brush here called Old Fence. That sounds pretty awesome. I'm gonna jump down and get a nice brown, make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'll put in, oh, that's super cool. I'll add in a little tree trunk here at the bottom, make it really small, maybe give it a couple branches. Happy little tree. You can instantly be Bob Ross with this. And then I'll jump back in. Let's take this splash doodle. Let's see what it's got. And I'll grab a lighter green. And let's see if we can use this to put some leaves over the top of those branches. 
awesome. Okay. If you go too far, of course, you can take your eraser tool and you can kind of clean this up a little bit just by erasing around the outside. The nice thing about Photoshop too is that you get to work in layers, right? So all that, that I've drawn so far is on just one layer and I can add a second layer behind it and drop it back here to put in my sky. So for example, I'll take, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's take some blue, nice sky blue here and I'll use my paint bucket tool and I'll just dump that blue onto this bottom layer. So now I've got my sky back there, okay? Let's see what else is in this brush set. Um, I'm gonna scroll down. We got some scratchy brushes, something called biohazard, uh, geo tree brush. That sounds interesting. Let's see what that does. Oh, that gives you little cone style trees if you're doing a drawing that way. I'm not actually gonna use that, let's see. So lots of cool stuff in this update. Um, there are others, I'll show you some of the ones like from spring, he released some great ones. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. This might be a good brush to use like for clouds actually, let's try this out. I'm gonna take this and switch to white mm -hmm. and I'm working on that background layer. So it's gonna be all behind my grass, my trees. Oh yeah, I can use this to create some nice like fluffy clouds here around the bottom. Very, very cool, okay? So these are some awesome brushes. Um, like I said, you can download and grab as many as you want from that Get More Brushes website. Try them out, um, keep them, and use them across all your different Adobe programs. Um, you'll be surprised at what you can make with these really powerful tools. Hi guys, Mr. Roper here for part three of my series on Photoshop brushes. Now in this video, we're gonna show you how you can take your brush creation even further and make your own custom brushes from photos you've taken, drawings you've made, or even little doodles that you may have laying around. So let's take a look at how we're gonna do this. First thing to prepare for this, what I've done is I've taken some photos of different textures and patterns that I thought would work really, really well for a brush. So I've got some photos of some dirt, um, some tree branches here. I even took a photo of some brush strokes that I made on a, just a piece of blank paper using a paintbrush and ink, okay? And I've downloaded all of these to my computer and opened them up in Photoshop so that I have them here as individual tabs, okay? So let's start with the, let's try it with the um, palm tree brush because I think that's probably gonna work best. Now in Photoshop, you can turn photos into brushes, but what we need to do first is convert them to black and white and very high contrast. So it can tell the difference between what part is the brush and what part is the background. Um, now this type of thing works best with an image that has a very clean, plain background to it. Um, if I were to take a picture of these palm fronds, but there was a building behind it, there'd be no way to separate the building from the tree, so it wouldn't make for a great brush. But I'm gonna use this one that I took against the blue sky. And what I'm gonna do is add an adjustment layer here for uh, black and white first. I'm gonna turn it pure black and white. And then I'm gonna add another adjustment layer for um, levels. And remember with the levels adjustment, let me move myself out of the way here. With the levels adjustment, you can control the amount of black, gray, and white in the photo. So I'm gonna add in some black so that it becomes almost like a pure silhouette. And I'm gonna add in some white so that this goes to just about pure black and white here, okay? Okay, so I've converted this to a pretty much pure black and white image. But remember, these are just levels or uh, adjustment layers. So they haven't actually changed the photo here. So one last thing I'm gonna do is right click and say flatten image. And what that's gonna do is apply all those adjustment layers to this photo to make it just a pure black and white. Now I'm gonna take my marquee tool right here and I'm gonna box out part of this image that I wanna turn into a brush. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So once I've got it selected with the marquee tool, I'm gonna go up to my edit menu and I'm gonna select define brush preset. What this will do is open up and it says, okay, you've created a brush here. What do you wanna call that brush? I'm gonna call this palm tree, okay? Oops, gotta spell it right here. 
palm tree brush and hit OK. And now you can see it's already created for me a custom Photoshop brush that looks like this design. It works just like any other brush. If I hit my bracket keys next to the letter P on my keyboard, I can make this smaller. And then I'll switch over here to the color black. And as I click, I'm now making a pattern out of that photo that I created. It's pretty awesome. Okay? And you can get really experimental effects with this. Let me take all of this and I'll just delete it out and I can click. Now, you'll notice that as I paint with this, it's only ever going to make the brush go in the same direction that I sampled. You notice it's not rotating or changing or anything there. And so that's where you can go up to this icon. This brings up your brush settings. And here's where you can really start to customize it. For example, I can go to some of these settings here for shape dynamics. And when I click on shape dynamics, I can change it so that every time I click, the size changes a little bit, bigger or smaller, okay? I can set it so that every time I click, its angle changes so that it rotates as I paint with it, okay? And I can change its roundness to get rid of some of those harder edges on the end of my brush. So let's see what the difference this makes. Now you notice that every time I click, the brush rotates and changes size to give me a more random effect. That's pretty awesome. Now there are a lot of other settings in here you can do too as far as whether it has wet edges like a watercolor brush. I'll turn those on. Um, we can change its color dynamics. Let me pick a different color here so you can see this. And we'll move some of its settings around here, like maybe the color changes every time I click um, or it gets brighter every time I click. And so as I go around here, look, now it's giving me a variation of colors as well as all those other features. Super, super cool, okay? Let's make another brush here. Um, one of the other photos I took was of some brush marks that I made on canvas. And these are actually gonna work really, really good because they're already in black and white. So first thing I'm gonna do is go down here and add an adjustment layer for levels. And I'm gonna crank up the black and crank up the white so that this becomes a pure white brush. Then I'm going to take my marquee, and this time I'll just use the lasso tool. And I'm going to lasso, let's see, I think I want to use this one right here. I'm going to lasso around this brush mark like this. And then go up to edit. Oops, got to make sure that I flattened my photo first. Let's do that. Come over here and right click, flatten image. There we go. Edit, define brush. Now, uh, we could give it a generic name here. Sampled brush is fine with me for this. I'm gonna click OK. Let me clear out my canvas so that it's blank again. And you can see now I've got my new custom brush. On its own, it's just gonna create a brush stroke like this. And that's actually really nice. It almost looks like leaves again. But you can see it's still very uniform. So let's change some of its brush settings to make this more dynamic. Remember that you can access the brush settings from this little file folder up here. So I'm gonna click that and let's click shape dynamics. I want the size to change a little bit. I want the angle to change as I brush with it. Uh, let's do some scattering so that as I brush, it spreads out more as I paint. And let's, do color dynamics. Um, I don't want it to change quite so much. How about we just have its brightness change a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna click. And every time I click, you can see that it's rotating the brush and it's cycling through different shades of green. Man, that's pretty, I really like that. And if I change up my sizes, wow. If I hold down and brush, I'm gonna get this really awesome randomized pattern. So cool. Let me go back a few steps here. Now remember with your brushes too, you can define what areas you want to fill. So if I take my lasso and I just make a random shape here and I paint inside of it, 
it will limit those brush strokes to only going inside that area. That's a beautiful pattern. I'm happy with it. Okay, so you saw some ways that you can make custom brushes. Opens up a huge world of possibilities. And you can take this even farther with a new app that Adobe has released called Adobe Capture. Let me show you what that looks like really quick. Adobe Capture is an app that you can get on your phone and you can basically take photos of the doodles and drawings that you make on pieces of paper and instantly convert them into brushes. So what you'll see from the video, right, is that this artist has used a Sharpie to make a little pattern on a piece of paper. They use the Capture app to take a photo of that pattern that they created and then it uploads it to the app and you define the brush size, how big you want it to be, okay? And then it'll convert it into a Photoshop brush. And then it floats in Adobe Creative Cloud so that the next time you open up Photoshop with your account, your brushes are all there. You could literally be making brushes all day long from things you see in your environment. So amazing, amazing tool. Um, only scratching the surface of what we can do with it. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in your own designs. Have fun with it. Yeah.